we have uh, talked about the uh, different laws of thermodynamics, uh, namely the first law, second law and the third law. Uh, just to remind you that the first law talks about uh, conservation of energy, uh, while the uh, second law talks about uh, how uh, the internal energy or the change in internal energy is connected, uh, uh, a part of it is spent as uh, uh, work done and uh, the heat that is given to the system. And we have also looked at uh, third law which sets a, a lower a limit of entropy at t equal to 0 when all the thermal motions cease. Um, now, uh, we have also seen that uh, the mathematical form of uh, uh, this uh, uh, the first and the second law combined is written as du equal to T d s minus P d v, uh, u is the internal energy T uh, s are the temperature and the entropy P is the pressure and V is the volume. Uh, here uh, S and V are independent variables and that is why they are varied whereas T and P are dependent variables. Okay. So, these uh, variables actually uh, come in pairs uh, such as P, V and T, S and as I said that one of them is independent and so it is varied the other is dependent. So, here S and V are changed independently and that is why they are called as independent variables and P and T are uh, dependent variables. We're just for the sake of repeating. So, now uh, consider that uh, the internal energy is a function of the independent variables okay? and uh, thereby what we will do is we will uh, derive uh, the thermodynamic definition of temperature and pressure uh, in terms of the internal energy. So, if u is a function of S and V, uh, I take a differential of that. So, uh, when I take a differential, I will have to take a du um, and uh, this uh, du is equal to um, say for example, del u del s. So, you change s at constant v and this is d s and plus a del u del v um, at constant s d v which is what is written here. So, d u equal to del u del s uh, d s plus del u del v d v and if you compare it with the combined form of first and second laws, uh, then uh, we can immediately identify that the temperature is given in terms of uh, the internal energy and the entropy as del u del s at constant v. Uh, and the pressure is actually a minus del u del v at constant s. Okay. In addition, uh, we have looked at the response functions. What is meant by response function is uh, that how does the system respond to a certain external stimulus and this could be uh, temperature or this could be heat. So, if you um, want to define specific heat, it is basically dq dt and from second law dq is nothing but T d s. So, this is T del s del T uh, C v is defined at a constant volume and C p is defined at a constant pressure. And um, in addition to the specific heat, there are two more response functions that we uh, would be using or uh, we may need. One is called as a thermal expansion coefficient beta which is equal to 1 over v del v del T p and uh, the isothermal compressibility which is uh, denoted by kappa which is equal to minus 1 over v del v del p uh, at constant temperature. Okay. So, these are t and p are the uh, dependent variables uh, which are expressed in terms of the internal energy and the independent variables and as well we have discussed this uh, response functions that is how the system responds to it. So, C v and C p have been discussed earlier. This is the expansion coefficient that is how the volume of the system um, responds to the temperature change that is called as a expansion coefficient or thermal expansion coefficient and compressibility it means that how much the system is compressible. We will see these concepts more as we go along. Let us uh, now uh, start discussing a classical ideal gas which is uh, a prototype system 
of uh, thermodynamics. In fact, it's the simplest system of thermodynamics which uh, we uh, most of the time we talk about consider a classical ideal gas. And uh, the word classical means that it is encoded in this energy expression where P i is a continuous variable okay? and that is why it is a classical variable that is why it uh, is called a classical uh, gas and it is ideal again because of the same energy that is written here that is there is no intermolecular um, interaction uh, that is uh, all the um, molecular interactions are neglected in, uh, uh, in defining the classical ideal gas. And we have seen this earlier that the equation of state uh, which means that uh, there are these thermodynamic parameters P, V and T not all of them are independent. In fact, they have a relationship between them which we call as uh, uh, P V equal to N K T or P V equal to R T where R is nothing but N K and this R is called as the um, universal gas constant and K is called as a Boltzmann constant. Now, the same equation that is uh, for a real gas, the equation of state for a real gas is uh, slightly different it is P plus A by V square into V minus B uh, equal to R T and uh, all these uh, A and B are some parameters which um, uh, talks about that uh, these finite size of the molecules and so on and so forth. Okay? So, um, mostly we will talk about this uh, P V equal to N K T unless we talk about uh, a real gas uh, not an ideal gas then we will talk about this uh, equation of state that is written here. So, what are the properties of this classical ideal gas? What can we learn from them as a thermodynamic system? What are the different thermodynamic parameters that uh, one can derive out of this? And uh, in order to do that we have to uh, define uh, what is called as a Maxwell's velocity distribution. And if you uh, look at the last slide here, uh, so this is nothing but a sum over i um, half uh, m i v i square. Okay? So, that is uh, all uh, the energy that it has that is uh, the kinetic energy. Uh, now, this V i that is uh, velocity of this individual particles and uh, now it is very easy to understand that all particles cannot have the same velocity. Just like uh, you know in a statistical sense um, all uh, people do not have the same nature or all students do not do the same performance and in a similar sense that uh, this V i actually refers to or rather uh, there is a distribution of velocities for these uh, particles. So, some of them are uh, faster moving than others and uh, this is uh, encoded in this uh, Maxwell's velocity distribution who proposed that uh, it is equal to 1 by V this V is nothing but volume that is a normalization factor. And then there are m by 2 pi k t uh, whole to the power 3 by 2. And then there is a Gaussian term which is written as minus m v square by 2 k t. So, uh, this form uh, is uh, easy to derive, but uh, uh, we are not deriving this uh, here, but we will just tell you that uh, the rational uh, behind this proposal is that uh, all these uh, v square. So, f uh, of v square that is equal to v x square plus v y square plus v z square and uh, uh, all these velocities in uh, different orthogonal directions they have to be independent of each other. Which means f uh, v x square would not depend upon f of v y square and f of v z square where f denotes a function and this function is written here which uh, this comes from uh, the uh, this normalization and why it is normalized because it is a probability. So, the probability that uh, you have um, the particle velocities are distributed between v and v plus dv is given by f v dv. Okay. 
since it is a probability the total probability for v to be uh, between minus infinity to plus infinity and minus infinity means that it is uh, moves in the say leftward direction and uh, say plus uh, infinity moves that it moves in the rightward direction or plus velocities mean uh, they are moving rightward and uh, negative velocities mean that they uh, move leftward and they can have any velocities uh, ranging from you know minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, uh, once again just coming back to this uh, point that we said uh, these uh, this f of v x square f of v y square and f of v z square are independent of each other and the only uh, function that would satisfy uh, such a uh, product relation that is independent is that there is an exponential either plus or minus. Now, this plus sign does not make sense because the plus sign will uh, not uh, allow this probability to be conserved or probability to be equal to 1 the total probability rather it will blow up. So, the only plausible sign is minus sign as, as I said that this 1 over v m by 2 pi k t whole to the power 3 by 2 it comes from uh, the normalization. So, if you really want to write it uh, for one uh, direction I will write it as 1 over l and uh, m by 2 pi k t whole to the power half because uh, I am just taking one direction and this will be minus m v x square by 2 k t okay. and in three dimension this can be trivially generalized with a factor of 3 by 2 and l changing over to v. So, this is how the uh, f of v or the probability, so this is really f of v uh, that looks like as a function of v in meters per second. You see it is a, a bell shaped or a Gaussian distribution and this Gaussian distribution has an uh, average which is given by this red color and written within uh, angular brackets. So, this is a average velocity and this uh, V p or sometimes it is called as V m p uh, is the uh, most probable speed okay. and uh, V r m s is a root mean square speed and uh, it is actually easy to uh, uh, sort of derive expressions for that. Uh, let me show you that um, in, in just a while. Uh, so, uh, let me show it here. Uh, this is uh, again a plot which shows this probability to be uh, for three different temperatures. So, as you see that uh, for uh, with increasing temperatures, so the blue one is for 100 Kelvin the next uh, T uh, the green one T 2 is for 300 Kelvin and uh, this 300 Kelvin uh, you will come across a, a number of times it is typically taken as a room temperatures which is like 27 degree centigrade okay. um, in summer of course uh, it could be larger than this, but that is like a, a prototype temperature that is taken and um, uh, the way uh, we can uh, calculate V p is that uh, we have this distribution and we can take a, a this uh, of this distribution and put that equal to 0 at v equal to v p. Okay. So, uh, v equal to v p. So, this will give you the, uh, the most probable speed. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can uh, calculate V average by uh, taking this uh, V uh, and this F of uh, V uh, dV uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, this is an odd function and this is an even function. So, the uh, this uh, integral would vanish if you uh, do it between minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, so, uh, we can uh, set the, um, the 0 of this uh, to be at, uh, so this is at, uh, this is taken as 0 unless there is a skewness of the distributions for the, uh, this distribution for this um, uh, Gaussian distribution this uh, V uh, can be uh, shown to be 0. Uh, and here, um, 
So, this what 0 means is that it is the middle of the distribution, okay. it is a value that is uh, shows uh, the peak of the distribution or uh, that uh, which is given by this integral of this f v d v. Coming to the uh, RMS, uh, RMS is defined as uh, the root mean square. So, what you do is that you have to calculate this quantity and this quantity is um, can be obtained by first taking uh, a v square and f of v dv and from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, I take the uh, uh, average of v square, now v square average is not equal to 0 multiplied by the distribution uh, integrate over all velocities from minus infinity to plus infinity and um, then you take a square root of that. So, uh, it is a root mean square velocity and this is an important uh, quantity as well um, in this distribution. Any distribution will have you know uh, there are certain things such as the mean uh, value of the distribution then the root mean square or the full width at half maximum and so on and so forth. Okay, so, if you use all of them uh, then uh, this comes out as so v uh, p comes out as root over of 2 k t over m uh, v average uh, would come out as at a given temperature it is root over 8 k t by pi m. Uh, and v square is uh, or rather the root mean square let us call it as a v r m s as we have defined v r m s. So, v r m s is equal to root over uh, 3 k t by m. So, if you take uh, this uh, ratio of all of that v p is to average velocity is to v r m s. Uh, this uh, comes out with a uh, root over 2 uh, is to root over 8 over pi. Uh, you see k t over m in uh, under square root is always common and this is square root of 3. So, you know uh, that you know the v r m s is uh, larger because uh, 8 over uh, pi is uh, something between 2 and 3. Uh, because pi is like 3.14. So, if you divide it by that, so it is 2 point something, there is a 2 here and there is a 3 here. So, and once again uh, we show that here as the temperature increases, uh, the height of the distribution goes down. So, as it, it goes down from uh, T 1 to T 2 um, and to T 3 farther and at uh, 500 Kelvin it becomes very broad with the mean value shifted towards larger and larger uh, velocities. Uh, let us now uh, look at uh, what is called as the equipartition theorem. Uh, the statement is very important. The statement says that the energy per harmonic degree of uh, freedom per particle for a system uh, at an equilibrium temperature uh, T in one dimension is given by E equal to half k t. Okay. So, this is an important statement. It says per harmonic degree of freedom, this is an important thing because there could be a different uh, number of harmonic degrees of freedom. Uh, we will see that in just a while and um, uh, we are just defining it per particle, but if you uh, want to define it for the system then you multiply it by n. And, um, this is one dimension that is why there is a half factor coming and just like in the next line we have written that in three dimension it is 3 by 2 uh, k t. So, this energy is equal to 3 by 2 k t uh, in three dimension per harmonic degree of freedom. So, if you have more than um, one harmonic degree of freedom uh, you will have a 3 by 2 k t plus a 3 by 2 k t and so on. Now, classical ideal gas in 3D has just this as uh, p square over 2 m. Okay. Uh, there is a p i square and sum over i, I am just writing the uh, just for uh, one particle. So, it is a p square over 2 m 
Now, there is just one harmonic degree of freedom p and because of that it is in 3 D it is a 3 by 2 k T just what we have said at a temperature T. Now, for an harmonic oscillator we have uh, a p square over 2 m plus a half m omega square r square okay? and that will tell you that there are two harmonic degrees of freedom uh, which one uh, corresponding to the p variable p that is momentum and the other corresponding to the space variable which is r say for example. So, this is um, let me write it without this uh, vector for the moment and uh, uh, they mean the same thing basically. So, it is a p square by 2 m plus half m omega square r square. So, we have a 3 by 2 k t and a 3 by 2 k t. So, this will give us uh, 3 k t. So, this is what equipartition says and uh, this last one we will see that when we uh, get deep into statistical mechanics this has a very interesting consequence that the specific heat of solids at large temperature goes as uh, uh, 3 r which is called as a Dulong Pettit law and specific heat would be uh, just the temperature derivative of this energy. Okay. So, that will give us a 3 r when you multiply it by n. So, n k is equal to r. All right. So, uh, let us uh, try to calculate the pressure exerted by an ideal gas and this is uh, will give us you know uh, the, the equation of state that we are quite familiar with and uh, how do we calculate the pressure all these molecules gas molecules that you see in the container are moving randomly in all directions. So, uh, take a particular direction and uh, say that uh, uh, a molecule impinges on the uh, say the right uh, side or right edge of the box and it returns back okay? and uh, this has to be considered as an elastic collision um, and uh, there will be no change in momentum. Uh, so, that uh, it is elastically it returns back. So, the incoming momentum uh, is m v x uh, considering this as the x direction. Uh, so, it is m v x and uh, the change in momentum would be minus of minus m v x which is nothing but equal to twice of m v x. Okay. So, it is twice of m v x. Now, in order to calculate the force uh, we take this uh, uh, twice of m v x uh, multiplied by the Maxwell's velocity distribution or the probability of these uh, particle to have a velocity between v x plus d v x is uh, uh, we multiply it by that and divide it by 1 over L and uh, we know that the pressure is obtained from the force by uh, dividing it uh, uh, by this area. So, uh, I divide it by L square and I get a 1 by L cube and then you uh, integrate this. You can do it in 3 dimension as well we will give you the same result and one gets a n k t over v where l cube is equal to v and this is the um, equation of state. So, this uh, very simply one can calculate uh, the pressure exerted by a classical ideal gas and um, which is nothing but uh, gives you the equation of state which is p v equal to n k t as it should. So, let us uh, do entropy of an ideal gas. Let me uh, just uh, do a few steps along with you. And um, uh, this entropy we know by now it is a measure of disorder it is a uh, and a system left to itself uh, according to second law would always proceed towards increasing entropy. So, how do we calculate entropy of such a gas? Okay, so, let me uh, uh, write down the same equation that we have written earlier which is a combination of uh, the first and second law. Okay. Uh, so, d u equal to uh, T d s minus P d v and uh, our u is equal to C v into T. Okay? So, this is the definition of a specific heat which is C v equal to u by T or u equal to C v T and we use the equation of state which is P v equal to n k T. I will be using this Boltzmann constant uh, rather than the gas constant in most of these cases, but if you are more uh, familiar and uh, some of the books actually prefer using the universal gas constant, 
where n k is nothing but equal to r. Okay, so, uh, now uh, we can uh, arrange this equation 1 and using these we can write down the change in entropy which is equal to a C v uh, d t over t. So, uh, this d u by t and d u is nothing but uh, C v d t, C v is of course, a constant plus a n k uh, d v over v. Okay. So, this is the equation, equation number 2 and this we have to integrate in order to get this uh, d s. And so, if you integrate uh, and uh, for integrating we will uh, integrate it from uh, some uh, s 0 v 0 and t 0 to s v and t and uh, doing that would get us uh, s equal to s 0 or s minus s 0 uh, equal to uh, it is a c v uh, log of t by t 0 as you can see that this d t over t. So, it will give you a log and when we do it from uh, initial temperature integrated from initial temperature t 0 to a t it will give you log t by t 0 and uh, so this is uh, n k uh, log of uh, v by v 0. And um, uh, we are allowed to club these two uh, logarithms uh, because you know that log of uh, a say for example, plus log of b uh, this is equal to log of a b and uh, we can uh, do that and uh, we can write down this equation as s is equal to. So, I write it combining the logarithm So, s equal to s 0 plus n k and uh, log of t to the power 3 by 2 into v uh, t 0 to the power 3 by 2 into v 0 and that is the, uh, the entropy of a classical ideal gas. So, All right. So, now uh, let us uh, discuss this a uh, mixing of two gases. So, what I mean by that is that suppose you have a container like this which has uh, a partition you have a gas here which let us call it as uh, A and you have a gas here as well let us call it as B and uh, at some point you open that. Uh, so, this can be thought of as you open this and let allow the gases to mix. Okay, so, the gases would mix eventually and A and B will get mixed. So, what will happen is that uh, now you have the total volume available. So, this had uh, say for example, V 1 and this had V 2 and there are these number of particles being N 1 and N 2 and now the composite system will have a volume which is V 1 plus V 2 and the number of particles being N 1 plus N 2. So, if you do that then the entropy would become equal to, so S equal to S 0 for the mixed gas for this uh, combined system it is equal to uh, plus N 1 plus N 2. This N is being replaced by uh, this N that you see here is replaced by N 1 plus N 2. And uh, we have other terms which are written as 
a k and then a log of uh, t to the power uh, 3 by 2 uh, v 1 plus v 2 uh, and uh, there will be a term which is uh, t 0 uh, 3 by 2 and a v 0. Okay. So, this uh, uh, from a combined uh, volume uh, it goes to uh, a term which is uh, uh, v 1 plus v 2 and uh, as you see that uh, S is an extensive quantity however, temperature is an intensive quantity and hence it does not change. So, the change in entropy is given by delta S which is S minus S 0 is simply equal to uh, if we open all of them it is N 1 plus N 2 um, and K uh, log of uh, v 1 plus v 2 and a minus of n 1 k uh, uh, log of v 1 and a minus n 2 of k into k log of v 2. So, this is for the combined gas and these are for the individual gases. Okay. So, this is the change in entropy and uh, this looks uh, fine uh, excepting that we will see that in just a while. Let us just put uh, that the, both the gases to have equal volume. So, V 1 equal to V 2 equal to uh, V over 2 and N 1 uh, is equal to N 2 equal to N over 2. This just to uh, create simplification in the calculation or rather this uh, expression that you have just seen. Uh, so, delta S comes out to be a very simple uh, expression which is k log 2. So, that is the change in entropy uh, when you allow mixing of two gases uh, each having uh, a volume V 1 and number of particles N 1 and um, a volume V 2 and number of particles N 2. So, it uh, uh, goes from uh, n 1 v 1 n and n 2 v 2 to n 1 plus n 2 and v 1 plus v 2 uh, with a common temperature T. Uh, the change in entropy of the gas is given as k log 2. So, that is a positive number and uh, like log 2 is like 0 0.693 and you multiply it by the Boltzmann constant will give you some number. But now that makes you uh, ask a question uh, what happens when both the gases are identical. Let me box it because uh, if both gases are identical then there should be no change in entropy. Okay. So, the answer is that there should be no change in entropy. And which means delta S is equal to 0, but we are getting delta S to be a number by just calculating what we just saw. And this gives rise to a paradox and this paradox is called as Gibbs paradox. As such this classical physics uh, will not offer any explanation how to get around that paradox or how to resolve this um, seemingly uh, contradictory uh, you know uh, notions. But when we go to quantum statistical mechanics that is uh, we um, accept the indistinguishability of particles that is the particles are no longer classical, but they are quantum mechanical uh, then this automatically this Gibbs paradox is resolved. So, uh, Gibbs paradox will be resolved uh, using 
indistinguishability of particles. And this is certainly not a domain of classical physics and we shall see that later. Coming to um, what is called as a chemical potential, there is an, another important concept that will uh, be there throughout the statistical mechanics um, and it is uh, defined with a symbol uh, mu. And in non isolated system that is system in contact with the surroundings um, that there can be uh, exchange of particles in addition to exchange of energy. And uh, chemical potential is uh, uh, work uh, needed or work uh, required to add one particle to the system. Uh, it is like an extra student um, you know comes in in the class and you would think that uh, if there is a bench available, suppose there is a bench or a seat available, this extra person will um, uh, sit in that the extra bench which was previously unoccupied. But that does not happen for uh, a gas because this uh, added particle will not be at rest. So, the entire assembly of particles, all the other particles will have to move and rearrange in order to come to an equilibrium temperature or rather come to an, an equilibrium at a temperature T. So, there is some amount of work required in order for this equilibrium to be established and chemical potential really uh, gives you that work done or that energy needed in order for the equilibrium to be re-established. We will see that um, for a fermionic system which are um, in the sense that they obey Pauli exclusion principles. So, they are hard core one does not um, in a single uh, energy state or a single quantum state it does not allow uh, two fermions to occupy with the same quantum numbers and uh, that is why there is a distribution that um, appears which is called as a Fermi distribution and the chemical potential which means that there are no other energy uh, states that are available. So, uh, a, a new particle added would have uh, to sit or rather would have to be occupied in an energy level at the Fermi uh, level or uh, you know at the Fermi energy uh, we will see that. Um, it is important to note that uh, a photon gas uh, has uh, no chemical potential or rather its chemical potential is equal to 0. And the reason is that uh, uh, the you keep photons inside a container and uh, photons are going to be exchanged continuously with the surrounding. So, um, there is no way that you can keep the number of photons to be con uh, constant inside a container and that is the reason that the free energy of the gas photon gas is uh, independent of uh, the number of particles because uh, so if uh, free energy becomes independent of the number of particles uh, you will have the chemical potential to vanish. Okay. So, um, let us uh, uh, deal with an open system where the number of particles are um, they remain uh, non-conserved and uh, there are now a more number of variables that are going to be required. So, we need more number of variables for these exchange of particles. So, our P, V and T and along with S and U etcetera uh, are not uh, going to be sufficient. And uh, in that case this uh, same old uh, combining the first and second law can be written as uh, du equal to T d s uh, minus P d v minus mu d n. Okay. And this mu d n is a new term and this uh, is the chemical potential uh, multiplied by the change in the number of particles. We had uh, earlier seen that u is a, a function of these independent variables which are uh, s and v 
and now we change this to u which are s, v and n where n denotes the number of particles. So, d u becomes equal to uh, del u uh, del s with v and n constant plus uh, del u del v sorry with a d s uh, del u del v uh, with s and n constant with a d v plus a del u del n with s and v to be constant uh, with a d n uh, and then a uh, term by term uh, now I just uh, call this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. So, if you um, compare between equation 1 and equation 2, you can simply see that s is defined as uh, uh, well uh, I mean s is uh, nothing but uh, so t is nothing but del u del s which we have already seen. However, what one does here is that one introduces a new um, energy functional which we have discussed earlier is the Helmholtz energy which is uh, u minus T s. So, f is the Helmholtz free energy. So, this is u minus T s. So, uh, using that one can define s to be equal to in terms of uh, these new energy functional which is del f del T uh, v n uh, p is equal to minus del f del v. Uh, we will see these uh, expressions several times uh, when we do statistical mechanics uh, and mu is equal to uh, del f del n with T and V. Just a while back I was talking about photon gas and I said that the free energy or the Helmholtz free energy is independent of the number of particle and that is why mu is equal to 0. So, del f del n equal to 0 and that is why mu equal to 0. So, these are the now the definitions of uh, uh, these uh, entropy pressure and chemical potential uh, which we uh, shall use. Now, let us calculate the chemical potential of an ideal gas which is nothing but uh, f uh, del f del n at a constant uh, T and uh, V. So, let us uh, take this equation for the entropy that we are familiar with which we have derived just a while back. So, S is equal to S 0 plus uh, n k log of uh, T to the power 3 by 2 V and uh, T 0 to the power 3 by 2 V 0 and so on. Okay. So, uh, and uh, you know uh, I mean your T is same. So, we uh, can write it as t to the power 3 by 2. Um, so, f is equal to uh, u minus T s which we have said and u is nothing but C v into T. We have seen that as well. So, this is minus T s and this is equal to T into uh, C v minus s. So, that is the expression for uh, f. We are slowly trying to get at f to be a function of n so that we can take the derivative and can uh, uh, get this chemical potential. And uh, C v is equal to 3 by 2 n k. Now, this is uh, the specific heat of a, of a monatomic gas. Uh, which is uh, easy to see because we have from the equipartition theorem we got uh, the energy per particle as 3 by 2 kT and C v is simply uh, del u del T or uh, C v into T is u. So, we can uh, get the C v to be 3 by 2 n k and uh, there is just one um, a degree of freedom which means uh, monatomic gas that we are talking about. So, uh, the free energy then uh, can be written as uh, so, this is equal to 3 by 2 uh, n k t uh, minus t uh, s and uh, this is equal to uh, n k t log of uh, t to the power 3 by 2 
uh, and uh, v there is a minus. So, this and uh, t to the power 3 by 2 and v naught and so on. Okay. So, that uh, uh, brings us that your mu which is uh, is equal to a uh, del f del n according to the definition with t by v equal to 3 by 2 k t and minus k t log t 3 by 2 v divided by t 3 by 2 v naught and that is the definition of chemical potential in terms of all the parameters of the uh, system. It is more customary to replace v by p uh, using equation of state. And uh, once we do that, uh, we get an equation which is k log p plus 3 by 2 k t minus k t log of uh, n k t uh, to the power 5 by 2 and uh, t to the power 3 by 2. Uh, v naught and so on. So, this is the expression for chemical potential of a classical ideal gas. So, uh, in terms of all these uh, parameters that are p, t, etcetera, etcetera, and so on. So, this is the amount of uh, energy needed to add a particle uh, to uh, the gas, okay, to introduce a new particle to the classical ideal gas. Okay. So, let us uh, do one um, example problem and um, uh, this example problem uh, is about uh, uh, a P in the PV diagram, a process, a thermodynamic uh, process is shown, or uh, rather, a reversible thermodynamic is process is shown. Um, Mn is uh, an isothermal, and Nk is adiabatic, and uh, Kl is nothing but so this is isothermal. This is adiabatic. and k l is uh, uh, the pressure is constant. So, it is isobaric and this is a volume being constant it is isochoric. And uh, then it says that uh, fill in the table for uh, different thermodynamic quantities uh, which are uh, the enthalpy. Uh, delta W which is work done, delta U the change in internal energy and change in temperature. So, if you look at K L which is an isobaric expansion which means P is constant. So, the gas does work on the surrounding which means delta W is equal to 0. Now, since the volume expands the density decreases. So, the delta T has to be uh, greater than 0. So, that is why it is written by plus uh, and plus here. And um, for an ideal gas, this is important that u is only a function of temperature for an ideal gas. So, uh, this, uh, this delta u increases because delta t increases as well. So, that is why this is also positive and uh, your delta h which is enthalpy uh, which is delta u plus delta w. So, both increase and so delta h increases as well. For the other um, uh, isochoric cooling, we have delta V equal to 0. So, work done goes to 0 because work done is PdV and um, uh, again delta T is 0 because uh, the, uh, the gas uh, it is happens at a constant volume. 
So, uh, the delta t is less than 0 uh, and delta u is less than 0 as well and uh, all these so that is what is shown by a negative and uh, this is 0 uh, work done is 0. So, delta h is negative as well because both delta u and delta w are negative. Uh, similarly, for the isothermal compression delta t is 0. So, we first get delta t equal to 0. Uh, delta V is shown to be uh, uh, lower uh, that is uh, delta V is less than 0. So, the work done is less than 0 here and uh, again delta U equal to 0 and delta H which is the sum of delta U and delta W because your delta W is negative this is again uh, negative and so on. Uh, then the adiabatic uh, compression uh, is uh, corresponding to delta H equal to 0 um, and uh, delta V is less than 0, delta W is less than 0 because it is a compression volume goes down. So, delta uh, W is less than 0 and, uh, and so on and then uh, your uh, delta U uh, would be greater than 0 and delta T is greater than 0 as well. Okay. So, uh, uh, go through it slowly in order to sort of convince yourself that all these um, what is increasing and what is decreasing along various uh, paths in the PV diagram they are all correct. Uh, we shall stop here and uh, continue uh, with a new uh, topic uh, in the next uh, meeting. Mm -hmm.